Welcome to the first video tutorial about Unigen. In this first video, we are going to cover the basics of Unigen, how to start up the editor, talk briefly about the different kind of panels the editor features, we'll learn how to load a world, uh, learn how to navigate a camera, the hotkeys, different kind of translation widgets, and just the general settings that you can use. Let's start by learning how to launch the Unigen Editor. Launching the Unigen Editor can be done through two different ways. One is by using the Unigen Browser, which can be found in the root of your Unigen installation, or if you download a zip package, it's still going to be found in the root of the folder. I created a shortcut to the desktop to be at hand whenever I need it. Once you run the Unigen browser, uh, you will see a few settings here at the top that you can set up while running the editor itself. This is very important because Unigen is a what you see is what you play type editor, which means while you are editing the actual level or world as Unigen calls them, you can directly see how your world is going to look in the game or application that you are going to be developing with Unigen technology. Once you select the settings that you need, we're going to be using DirectX 11 a resolution, um, shaders on high, Antalyzing of 2 and an anisotrophy filtering of 4. And you need to select what you wish to run. We want to run the editor, so we go to the Tools tab, find the editor, which is at the top, and click Run Unigen Editor. This will start up the editor, as you can see, up here with all the tools. This is one of the ways. Another way to run the editor itself is by running a Unigen based application. Now for this purpose, I'm going to open up one of the demos that come with the Unigen SDK. Now I'm at the root of the SDK installation folder. I, uh, and under the demos, I'm going to, let's go with the Heaven benchmark. We'll wait until it loads. It's one of the most beautiful benchmarks I've ever seen, actually. The lighting is simply brilliant in this engine. There we go. So I see my FPS is being cut down during the video recording. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the actual benchmarking. And show you how to start the editor itself from within the application. It's pretty simple. You need to pull down the console using the tilt key and typing in editor underscore load and hitting enter. Once that is done, up here you will see the toolbar coming back. Now you are inside the Unigen editor again. You can select objects, move them around and so on. Now that we've covered how to run the Unigen editor itself, let's see how to open up an actual world or a level. Up here in the Unigen toolbar, the first section is the world control section. The world control section, as I call it, 
provides you with the tools to create a new world, open a world that was previously saved, or save the world that you're currently worked on. Now let's open up a world. Unigen comes with a large number of demos, uh, where it's library samples, and examples of its systems. Let's see. Let's look at a physical sample. Maybe a fracture one. As you can see, I just open up the world. Now, if I want to actually try the world that I am inside, I need to exit the editor to actually run it. So exiting the editor can be done through the tool or the button up here at the end of the toolbar. And now I'm actually in the world and I can try it out. This is a fracture demo which demonstrates objects breaking up. Next thing that we're going to learn is to how to control the camera within the Unigen editor. First, uh, let's look at the controls overview and the hotkeys for the camera controls. By pressing escape, uh, we can bring up this quick menu here, which has a couple of nice tabs that we'll get back to later. Right now, What's interesting for us is the controls tab. Here um, we see a bunch of different controls which can be used while navigating within the environment. As you can see the forward, backward, move left and right are the standard W, A, S and D keys. So I can move back and forth, strafe left and right. The crunch key is Q and the jump key is E. These are active while in character mode, but while we are navigating the actual editor, the E key rises the camera upwards and the Q key lowers it down. Also, each key can be reassigned to whatever you want so if you prefer a different key binding for the camera controls you can go ahead and change it to whatever you like another interesting camera trick that i really like to use especially while working with modular environments is the camera lock around a specific object this can be achieved by first double clicking an object and then pressing the f key to go into a orbit camera mode around the selected object. Then while clicking and dragging, the camera rotates around the object or while holding right click zooms in and out. If you want to leave the orbit mode from around the specific object, press the G key. And then deselect the object with the space key. Panning the camera can be done with the left key by clicking and dragging to any direction you want to look and zooming in and out same as with the orbit mode can be done with the right click. Now my camera speed is really slow. Um, I would really like to go faster. So in order to go faster, we can open up the tools panel which is the hammer and wrench icon up here in the toolbar and going to the camera tab and then changing the min and max velocity. Increasing the min and the max velocity will increase the overall speed of the camera. So I'm going to increase it to 20 and change 
the max velocity to 40. Uh, this will essentially increase the speed of my camera by five times, as you can see. And if I want to go with the max velocity speed, I can just hold the shift key. In addition to the camera hotkey setups in Unigen, there are some additional hotkeys that you can change to suit your needs and make the whole work environment entirely set up for yourself. Up here in the toolbar, look for the hotkey setup icon, which is a bunch of computer keys, as it looks to me. Clicking that opens up the key bindings panel. And as you can see, it's divided up into a couple of different tabs. Within these tabs, you'll find a bunch of different actions that you can take and the hotkeys for them. So you can just look at the hotkeys if you want to, or you can change them to whatever you like by clicking at them. and then pressing the key that you want it to be assigned. Now that we've checked out how to move the actual camera within the Unigen editor, let's check out how to actually move various nodes or objects within the Unigen editor. Let's first look at the tools up here in the tools panel. The little arrow at the start is the select object tool. The select object tool is really useful when you want to select things, but you do not want to move them by accident. Double clicking any object will select it. Pressing space will deselect it. Space will deselect an object in any mode. So if you are in translation mode, or rotation mode, you can still hit space to deselect the specific object. Now, the translation tool allows for moving the object along specific axes by clicking and dragging the little arrow, or between two axes by clicking and dragging the little rectangle that is in between the specific axes. A useful thing with moving objects around is the align to surface and it can be activated by selecting a specific object and pressing Control X. This will immediately snap the object to anything that's below it and as you can see, the pivot is being all the way aligned to the surface. As I pull along the terrain here, it follows the surface of it. Now, if I put it all above this wooden platform, it also aligns to it. This is really useful when you want to make sure that your object is not aligned above the ground but specifically right next to it. If you want to leave the object where you have it currently within the align to surface, you just click and the object will stay there. Or if you are aligning to surface, but you decide that you do not wish to align to the surface and want to go back to the state the object was previously, you need to hit escape and the object will be where it was previously. Rotating objects can be done by selecting the rotation tool and clicking any of the rotation axes. As you can see, the green, red and blue lines. If you want a specific rotation, However, if you want to just rotate the object while designing the level and it does not need to be according to a specific axis, you can just click and drag within the little ball here. And as you can see, you can 
easily rotate the object to fit whatever you need instead of having to uh, go in and, and try to match a rotation with the actual axes. It's really easy to rotate the object and it's one of the most useful rotation features I've actually met so far while working with different engines. This little drop down here will modify how the other tools work. While selecting world, the object will be either translated or rotated according to world coordinates. Or if you select parent, the object or node will be translated or rotated according to its parent's coordinates. Now in Unigen, you can assign nodes below other nodes as childs. Later on, we will cover this in detail, how the actual nodes work. Now in short, you are able to assign various objects under each other or sort them into groups to move them together. If you change the coordinates to local, and select a specific object. Now, as you look at the actual arrows, you will see that the translation is going to be done according to the coordinates of the actual object. Cloning of objects can also be done through the actual translation widget. While you are in translation mode, Press and hold shift and translate the object into any direction. As you can see, a copy will be created. Once you let go of left click, the engine will ask you to confirm that you want to clone or not. So if you click OK, you will see that an identical copy with identical rotation will be created. Or if you want to move a specific object regardless of its parent, for example, this little, this very little island here. If I move it, you will see immediately that the whole island moves, all the objects and everything according to it. Now, what if I want to move only the island, but do not wish to move the objects on it? Because the other objects and the island are all within a group, the whole thing will move at the same time. Now, if I want to move only the island, while in translation mode and holding Alt, I can move the actual island and the rest of the objects will not move. Now this is very useful when you have multiple objects in a hierarchy and you just do not want to move everything, just reposition something within it. That would be it for the first part of video one. Stay tuned for the second part. See you guys next time.